Premier ministre, bonjour. Vous ne vouliez pas que Mme Telfer témoigne en comité. Votre parti s'est battu pendant des jours pour bloquer ça. Comment expliquer la volte-face aujourd'hui? La réalité, c'est qu'une fois euh, qu'on a maintenant euh, l'ancien gouverneur général, M. Johnston, qui commence son travail, euh, son mandat a été mis public. Les gens savent euh, qu'on est en train de prendre ça au sérieux. On est en train euh, de faire une recherche euh, responsable pour trouver les réponses pour les Canadiens et pour le, démontrer leur confiance dans la situation. Euh, on veut continuer de faire, euh, faire fonctionner le Parlement. On voit très bien que les conservateurs veulent en faire un, un cirque partisan. Mais nous, nous sommes en train de travailler de façon responsable et, et euh, je suis content que Mme Telford va être Pourquoi avoir changé d'idée? C'est pas une question de changer d'idée, c'est une question que, une fois maintenant que le mandat est sorti, euh, que euh, l'ancien le gouverneur, gouverneur général va commencer son travail, les gens vont savoir qu'il y a une façon sérieuse et responsable de trouver toutes les réponses que les gens ont. Parce qu'on sait très bien qu'en comité, euh, les conservateurs l'ont dit de façon très claire, là, ils sont en vont poser des questions à laquelle les gens ne peuvent pas répondre. Mme Telford ne va pas pouvoir répondre à des questions sur des enjeux de sécurité nationale, mais de pouvoir démontrer qu'en même temps, il y a un processus rigoureux et responsable et non partisan, euh, dirigé par l'ancien gouverneur général, qui va trouver ces réponses-là. Euh, ils peuvent faire ce qu'ils veulent. Pourquoi vous donnez le green light pour testifier? One of the things is that this is an extraordinarily serious situation, despite the attempts of the Conservatives to make a partisan circus out of it. Uh, we demonstrated today with the appointment of Mr. Johnston, who's a former Gen Governor General, who's going to be doing his uh, work with a clear mandate uh, to dig into all aspects that Canadians are asking questions about. That's where the answers are going to come. We know that at committee, when we heard from ministers, when we heard from the National Security and Intelligence Advisor and top uh, security officials, There are, unfortunately, many things that can't be said in a public committee. Now, the Conservatives are trying to uh, gin up the toxicity and partisanship by making political theatre out of it and by uh, catching uh, Ms. Telford or others and not being able to answer direct questions. Well, those questions will be answered in responsible ways by the process the former Governor General is doing, by uh, the work done at NSI COP, the, by the work done at NCIRA. There are enough processes in place right now uh, that we're now focused on making Parliament work. So, so, why that is that is so we forced the government to stop the obstruction in committee and to have the uh, Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister testify, which renders the Conservative motion useless, which is very much on brand for a party that has been pretty useless. They're not interested in, in getting things done in this parliament for people, making life better for people, and they're not interested in a public inquiry. We actually had a vote on a public inquiry scheduled for the House in this parliament today, and they blocked it. So they're not interested in a public inquiry, and I asked the question of, of the Conservative leader, what does he have to hide? Why is he blocking the public inquiry, what games are he, is he trying to play? Uh, and so we'll, we'll continue to hold the government to account and continue to work for Canadians. Donc, uh, aujourd'hui, on a forcé le gouvernement d'arrêter l'absorption dans le comité et uh, de, de forcer or de, arrête, de permettre um, le chef de cabinet du, du gouvernement, du de, de premier ministre, de témoigner. Uh, ce qui est fait effectivement que la motion des conservateurs est inutile et c'est une partie inutile. Ils n'ont rien fait vraiment pour aider les gens pendant ce temps difficile et ils ont aussi bloqué notre motion aujourd'hui pour avoir un vote dans ce chambre pour une enquête publique. Ils ont bloqué ça. Donc uh, j'ai posé la question pourquoi ils continuent de jouer des jeux politiques comme ça au lieu de faire ce qu'il faut pour les gens. Ready for any did you questions? force the government to have Ms. Telford testify or did you make a deal with them to have her testify at PROC? I forced the government and I made it really clear today they had a choice. Uh, they could stop the obstruction in parliament, in, in committee, allow the, the witness to testify, or we would support the motion. So you didn't have any negotiations with them? There was no conversation with Mr. Trudeau or his staff to make it so that it was at PROC instead of ethics? We have conversations regularly, so we, we always have conversations, but this was clearly New Democrats saying, you can stop the obstruction or we're going to support the vote. Mais vous pensez que c'est à cause de votre euh, ultimatum que le gouvernement a décidé de, de procéder de la sorte? Oui. Avez-vous une preuve de ça? <laughs> le fait que ce matin, on a dit que, vous, euh, on a dit que si vous n'arrêtez pas de, de continuer l'obstruction dans le comité, si vous ne permettez pas à le chef de cabinet du premier ministre de témoigner, 
on va voter en faveur de la motion. So you're fine with not seeing hard ethics. Proc is, is good enough for you. Well, what's, neither of this is good enough for me because what I really believe fundamentally, this is not a game. And, and I've seen the conservatives really try to play a game with this. The liberals have, have not answered Canadians' questions. And it's really called out the importance of a public inquiry. And I maintain that position. That's what would satisfy me. More importantly than me, that would satisfy Canadians who are worried, who've got some concerns about what's going on with elections and are already experiencing a lot of apathy when it comes to voting. And the idea of political interference is only going to make that apathy worse. So I genuinely believe the only path forward to really restore confidence is a public inquiry. So I'm not satisfied until that happens. It seems like Mr. Johnson has a fairly broad mandate from the Prime Minister to either uh, call for public inquiry or different kinds of inquiries. Is a public inquiry for your bus for you or are there other mechanisms that would be suitable for you to get to the bottom? Well, I've said a public inquiry because I don't know of another specific mechanism, but I've said the two elements that I want to see is something that's independent and something that's transparent. So really that's what I want to see happen. And I've been maintaining that a public inquiry is the only mechanism I know that would satisfy that. But those are the two criteria that I want to see met. Something public so people can see what's going on, something that's independent. Vous avez euh, en chambre, vous avez accusé les conservateurs d'avoir bloqué une oui. motion. Comment ils ont fait ça? Juste un peu de détails sur qu'est-ce qui s'est passé dans la mécanique. Oui, donc dans notre leader en chambre peut vous donner plus de détails, mais euh, on a planifié une vote aujourd'hui euh, sur le fait que dans le comité, on a forcé une vote sur l'idée d'avoir une enquête publique. Les autres, tous les partis d'opposition ont appuyé notre motion, la motion néo-démocrate, d'avoir une enquête publique. Donc, il y a une, une technique, une façon d'avoir de, de cette vote qui était dans la Chambre, d'amener cette vote dans, dans, le, dans le comité, euh, d'amener cette vote dans la Chambre. C'était planifié aujourd'hui, mais et on, a déjà, on a avisé les conservateurs qu'on va faire ça. Les, les conservateurs savaient qu'on va avoir une vote sur l'enquête publique, Uh, ce qu'on a fait dans le comité. Ils ont ajouté une autre motion qui a effectivement bloqué notre motion. En savant, on a avisé qu'on va faire ça, ils, ils ont rien dit. Et puis, à la dernière moment, ils ont ajouté une nouvelle motion qui a effectivement bloqué notre motion. On a avisé uh, le, 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 les conservateurs en avance. Ils, ils ont rien dit comme négatif. Ils ont accepté ça. Et puis, à la dernière moment, ils ont ajouté une nouvelle motion. Une nouvelle motion. Et cette motion a fait en sorte que notre motion a été bloquée. Et s'ils si êtes comme vraiment euh, honnêtes qu'ils veulent avoir une enquête publique, on a eu la chance, c'était planifié, d'avoir un vote sur cette question aujourd'hui, mais ils l'ont bloqué. Ça va changer quoi d'avoir Katie Telford qui vient témoigner en comité, puisqu'elle ne pourra rien dire à cause du secret euh, et des documents top secret? Vous espérez apprendre quoi de plus? C'est une bonne question. Euh, les Canadiens ont des questions par rapport à ce que le ministre de Premier ministre, ou qu'est-ce que le bureau de Premier ministre, ou qu'est-ce que le Premier ministre savait euh, pendant les élections, et qu'est-ce qu'elle a fait avec cette euh, connaissance, ou est-ce qu'elle est qu a rien fait avec cette connaissance. Ce sont des questions importantes. Je préfère d'avoir cette question posée dans une enquête publique, mais sans avoir ce processus, on essaie peut-être que ça va répondre aux questions des Canadiens, mais ce n'est pas la façon idéale, et c'est pourquoi je continue de maintenir ma position que l'enquête publique, c'est la meilleure façon. Si une enquête publique, c'est la... Si une enquête publique, c'est la meilleure façon, pourquoi vous acharnez à ce moment-là, si je prends la question à l'envers puis je me fais l'avocat du diable? Pourquoi vous acharnez à faire témoigner Mme Telford si, voyez, si la meilleure façon, c'est une enquête publique? Dans le fond, ce que j'essaie de voir, c'est que vous n'êtes pas un, un petit peu en train de jouer le jeu politique que vous dénoncez les conservateurs qui sont en train de faire? On, on a essayé de, de trouver une façon prudente. On a enlevé les blocages. Donc, on a, on a montré qu'on est le, le, le parti qui a, qui a effectivement fait fonctionner le comité. C'était un blocage avec... Euh, les, cons, les, cons, euh, les, les libéraux qui ont bloqué euh, le vote sur cette question. Donc, on a enlevé ce blocage avec notre position. On a montré qu'on est, on est vraiment honnête avec notre désir de, de savoir qu'est-ce qui s'est passé et comment on peut défendre notre système de, de, des élections. Mais euh, sans avoir un processus indépendant à ce moment, il y a des questions que les, les Canadiens veulent, veulent, veulent savoir, euh, les réponses que les Canadiens veulent savoir, et c'est pourquoi on est on a, euh, on a ajouté, euh, on a utilisé cette euh, motion aujourd'hui. 
I have a question about President Biden's upcoming visit. You were originally going to talk about that earlier today. Uh, what does a successful visit look like for you? Is there anything that you want to see the Prime Minister raise with him? The number one concern we have is about the approach of the IRA, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, and the Buy American provisions. There's been an exception, a good exception for electric vehicles, which is which is positive, electric vehicles and batteries in our country. But we're deeply concerned that the the connection between Canada and America is so we're so interlinked that a Buy America provision for infrastructure could mean a ser serious negative blow to producers in Canada, to workers in Canada, and we want to make sure that it's a North American approach as opposed to a Buy America approach, because even if you look at steel, a uh, product of steel flows back and forth across the border so many times, wood products, so many products are, we're so interconnected that uh, we will really want to encourage that there is, there is an approach that's North American as opposed to uh, U.S. only. And, and that's to protect jobs. So that's our major concern. We also want to see that Canada responds to the Inflation Reduction Act with real incentives in Canada to encourage we create jobs here to reduce our emissions and ensure there's good paying jobs for the future. Hi, I, sorry if you already were asked this, but can you just clarify why the NDP is giving the Liberals an out with a much narrower committee study than the Conservatives are proposing? So, I mean, the Conservatives are very clear. They wanted and I think it's a game for them. They weren't that serious about it, but they wanted the chief of staff. Now, was all their shareables were about the chief of staff. Everything they approached was the chief of they're staff. Running, running and the that was their shareable, and that was their approach. And what we got done is we actually made it happen. Conservatives were talking about it, and they were playing games in committee. We made it happen. So we forced the government to uh, permit the chief of staff to testify. We also have a list that goes beyond just the chief of staff. Uh, but for an exhaustive list, that's not going to happen in committee, nor should it happen in committee. We don't well, think that's the right. We don't think. We don't think. We don't think. We don't think that's the appropriate pa path. I'll, I'll respond to a question once I finish my thought. Um, that's not the appropriate path. We think, and we said from the beginning, this committee uh, has turned into a circus in a lot of ways. We look at the con the conservative approach. They're not serious about getting work done. They're not serious about holding the government to account beyond just attacking the government and throwing mud. They're not interested in protecting your democracy. We had a vote today that could have happened today on a public inquiry. We gave the Conservatives heads up. We let them know it was going to happen. We would have had a vote in Parliament on a public inquiry. They blocked it. They're not interested in getting to the truth. And the committee is not the best path to actually deal with these serious questions. We believe in a public independent inquiry is the path. But there's some questions that Canadians need answered, and there's some people that should be coming before committee, and we made that happen. But for an exhaustive list, that should happen in a public independent inquiry, not in committee. So how do, how do, how do you, I guess, um, explain the fact that it looks like the NDP are giving cover for the Liberals? Well, that's false. That's a conservative narrative. The reality is the conservatives, conservative? the conservative, no, the narrative, it's not your narrative, it's a conservative narrative. The conservative narrative is this. They make it sound like they care about a public inquiry. We had a chance to vote on it today. Literally today, we could have voted on a public inquiry with the opposition parties pushing forward a public inquiry. They blocked it. We made the chief of staff of Justin Trudeau testifying committee, we made that happen. We forced it to happen. We've shown that the Conservatives are useless because they are useless. They've been useless in the pandemic. They've been useless in this minority government. They haven't done a thing for Canadians to make their lives better. We have consistently been the ones to try to protect our democracy, to try to deliver real help for Canadians, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, so once again, Justin Trudeau only climbs down after he's literally tried everything else. We've known now for months that Justin Trudeau was briefed years ago about the communist regime's interference in Canadian elections to the benefit of the Liberal Party. This came to light in November, and still he denied. He denied ever hearing any information about the network of, uh, of officials linked to the communist regime in Beijing, helping funnel uh, funds through to various aspects of the Liberal campaign. Yet he denied it. And it's only in recent weeks that brave whistleblowers have unveiled more information about what warnings were sent to the Prime Minister and which warnings were, and those warnings were largely ignored. And now for weeks, the Liberals have gone through a dramatic theatrical display at committee, desperately filibustering and blocking 
efforts to force senior liberal officials and uh, the chief of staff to the prime minister himself, Katie Telford, from appearing. And it was only after our motion yesterday, which would have forced a vote in the House of Commons on compelling Katie Telford, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, to appear at committee and tell Canadians what she knew and what the Prime Minister knew. And now the Prime Minister is expecting, Justin Trudeau is expecting a gold star for exhausting every attempt to delay and block Ms. Telford from testifying. None of this, none of this takes away from the urgent need for a full independent public inquiry. Justin Trudeau has uh, created a phony position and appointed a close family friend with, uh, who sits on the board of the Trudeau Foundation, the very foundation which accepted funds linked to the communist regime in Beijing, and uh, only f which, which only returned those funds after getting caught. He's appointed this person to, uh, to, to, to fill this phony position, and we won't know for months what the decision is. Uh, Canadians need certainty. They need to have confidence in their democratic institutions. Uh, we need to take action before foreign interference can affect a future election. And that's why Conservatives will continue to push and press the just, uh, Justin Trudeau to finally do the right thing and call a full independent public inquiry. Uh, Francais? Merci, Andrew. Bonjour tout le monde. Donc, on a vu ce matin, finalement, après avoir tout essayé, Justin Trudeau a finalement cédé à la pression. C'est la pression de, des partis d'opposition, en particulier du Parti conservateur, qui demandait d'avoir Katie Telford en comité. Après avoir tout essayé, comme je dis, parce qu'on sait que le comité de la procédure a passé 23 heures de, de filibusting de la part des députés libéraux. qui ont tout fait pour que Cathy euh, Telford ne vienne pas. Et ce matin, après avoir vu qu'on ne riait pas avec la journée de position, la motion de position hier qui a été débattue ici, on a, le gouvernement Chien Trudeau a finalement réalisé que la pression était trop forte et qu'il devait accepter la demande du Parti conservateur pour Cathy Telford. Ceci ne change rien. Ça ne change rien au fait qu'on demande toujours d'avoir une enquête publique indépendante la nomination, on a vu ce qui est annoncé par rapport à M. Johnson, ça ne change absolument rien à notre position. Notre position demeure que c'est une enquête publique indépendante qui est la seule chose, qui est la chose à faire. Merci. Est-ce que vous avez quand même au NPD qui vous dit que c'est eux, en fait, qui ont forcé la main aux libéraux en menaçant euh, d'appuyer votre motion? <rire> Écoutez, honnêtement, là, je ne sais pas où le NPD s'en va parce que, ils ont, comme on dirait, qu'ils n'ont pas de repères à part que d'avoir une coalition formelle avec le Parti libéral, avec le gouvernement. À chaque fois qu'il y a un enjeu et que M. Singh se lève pour soulever l'enjeu à la faveur des, de l'opposition, tout le monde part à rire parce qu'on sait de l'autre côté, il donne son appui au gouvernement. Fait que, il, il dit un peu n'importe quoi. Je sais qu'avant nous, plus, plus tôt aujourd'hui, il est venu dire qu'on faisait de l'obstruction. <rire> On part à rire à chaque fois. Écoutez, c'est M. Singh, honnêtement, n'est pas très sérieux dans sa façon de faire, dans sa façon surtout d'aborder cet enjeu-là qui est critique qui est crucial, l'interférence dans nos élections. On a vu, on, a, on sait, là, c'est grave ce qui se passe au Canada. Puis, d'avoir une enquête publique indépendante, le NPD le demande, le Bloc le demande, les conservateurs, on est tous d'accord, mais lorsqu'arrive le temps de voter sur une motion très importante comme hier, et ce n'était pas seulement Cathy Telford, si vous regardez la motion, là, il y a 23 points précis, détaillés, et on avait même affaire au NPD. Si vous voulez faire des amendements à la motion, on est ouvert, on n'a pas de problème. Mais au lieu de travailler sérieusement, à vraiment pousser le gouvernement là, à faire ce qu'il se doit, il décide de jouer à des petits jeux. Puis... Ça sert à quoi d'avoir Mme Telford qui témoigne si, au bout du compte, vous voulez une enquête publique? Bien, ça sert à quoi? Demandez pourquoi il y a eu 23, presque 24 heures d'obstruction au comité de la procédure par rapport à Mme Telford. Vous pourquoi? C'est parce qu'elle sait des choses. Elle doit témoigner. Si, si elle ne savait rien, elle ne savait rien, il n'y aurait aucune obstruction. Elle serait venue témoigner au comité de la procédure, puis elle aurait dit « je suis au courant de rien ». Mais si c'est pas actuellement, ce qu'on a vu, ils ont, ils ont tout fait, les, les libéraux ont tout fait pour l'empêcher. Puis là, aujourd'hui, M. Trudeau n'a pas eu le choix. Il a abdiqué, il a cédé sous la pression. Sheer, Uh, this hearing happened at a committee where the Liberals hold the chair because the chair will be able to use procedural tactics to their advantage. So uh, clearly that was part of, of the deal. But I just have to say, you know, I've served with several 
NDP leaders. I, 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 I served in the House with Jack Layton, with Ed Broadbent, Alexa McDonough, and Thomas Mulcair. I've never seen an NDP leader like this selling out long-standing principles that that party used to stand for uh, in exchange for, 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 for who, who knows what. And, 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 I, and I just, and I just want to say, it should have been a no-brainer for the NDP to support our motion. The only reason why any of this happened was because Conservatives put forward this motion and we challenged the NDP to vote with us. And we informed Canadians that if... It, no, 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 no. We, we put forward this motion and the NDP would not indicate how they were going to vote for it, uh, how they were going to vote. And it was only after intense pressure from Conservatives shining a light on what the NDP was about to do that they finally realized it and that they finally uh, uh, seemed to come on board. But make no mistake, if it weren't for this motion this week, if it weren't for conservative pressure on this issue, none of this would have happened today. So what are the principles, that, the, what are the principles that Mr. Singer is selling out? What principles do you see As missing? Assisting the Liberals covering up the truth. I mean, the, the, the NDP and Conservatives used to disagree on policy, but we used to agree on openness and transparency and ethics. And now, and now, and now, Jagmeet Singh, and now Jagmeet Singh, now Jagmeet Singh has decided to help cover up Liberal scandals. And we've seen this uh, before with the We Charity scandals. We've seen this multiple occasions where they vote with the Liberals. They vote uh, to, to, to to prevent key officials from testifying. This isn't the first. This isn't the first occasion. So is, the, is the principle and the precedent that is now set that chiefs of staff to prime ministers are going to testify at committee? Like you hope Katie to form the next government, will you, would the chief of staff to prime minister Polly up testify at committee? Katie Telford has already testified twice, so she has already uh, established this principle. And to follow up on a, on a question, uh, why this is so important? Because Katie Telford, of course, has two roles. One is the chief of staff to the prime minister and that office, and the other is a senior official with the Liberal Party of Canada, which was the beneficiary, according to these reports from CSIS officials, of the communist regime in Beijing's foreign interference. Qu'est-ce que votre motion telle que proposée à la Chambre aurait pu apporter de plus que la motion qui a été adoptée en comité à PROC? Un, premièrement, un vote de la Chambre. Un vote de la Chambre qui aurait été majoritaire, aurait donné un ordre au gouvernement. Donc, c'est quoi la différence? Ben écoutez, le point, c'est qu'on voulait que Katia Telford vienne. Les, on a été bloqués pendant 23 heures euh, de Philippe Bosting de la part des libéraux en comité. On a eu un débat en chambre hier sur notre motion, donc cette motion-là est importante. Et comme on, on, je disais tantôt, il y avait plusieurs éléments. Il y avait Katia Telford, mais également plusieurs euh, personnes qui étaient demandées à comparaître au comité de l'éthique. La motion demandait de, de faire cette rencontre-là à l'éthique. Bon. Sur le rapporteur spécial qui va avoir son rapport au mois de mai, c'est dans deux mois, si mm -hmm. je calcule vite. Là. 23 mai. Est-ce que c'est est, est -ce est rapide? Est-ce que c'est suffisamment rapide pour ben, vous? La ligne, le rapport n'est pas le 23 mai. Le 23 mai, le rapporteur spécial indépendant, entre guillemets, parce qu'on sait qu'il n'y a pas vraiment d'indépendance en son cas, euh, va euh, dire si on devrait aller vers une enquête publique indépendante ou autre chose. Mais pour nous, on revient à ce que je disais. La question, c'est qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cet échéancier-là? Pour nous, l'échéancier, qu'il soit la semaine prochaine ou le 23 mai, ça ne change rien. On veut une enquête publique indépendante maintenant. Et on a déjà dit que M. Johnson n'était pas la personne pour être un, un rapporteur parce que la proximité avec M. Trudeau, la Fondation Trudeau, etc. Donc, vous pour nous… Vous êtes fondé position. C'est une vraie position. Pourquoi vous… vous non, écoutez, là, on ne fera pas le débat ici aujourd'hui là-dessus. On l'a déjà mentionné. Bon, notre chef l'a déjà mentionné pourquoi on considérait que ce n'était pas sérieux. Il reste que… Jusqu'à date, les trois partis d'opposition, la majorité de la Chambre des communes, demandent une enquête publique indépendante. Et c'est la... Can you explain uh, the difference in the powers and the scope of the study that the Liberals have agreed to through the NDP compared to what your party proposed in the House? Yeah, look, uh, our, our, our motion had uh, some very important uh, provisions in it. First of all, it would uh, take place at the Ethics uh, Committee. We've seen what Liberal chairs have done uh, this session using the, the, the power of the chair, uh, the chair's position to, uh, to, 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 to help the cover-up for, for the Liberals. Uh, in addition, it had an automatic provision in it that if, uh, if Ms. Telford for any reason refused to, to come, uh, that that would have been reported automatically back to the House in terms of a privilege motion. So th there was real teeth in our motion. Uh, look, at the end of the day, this all could have been avoided weeks ago. I think Canadians are tired of the toxic games that Justin Trudeau has been playing on this issue. Uh, Canadians are very concerned about the integrity of our electoral system. And this filibuster, this, the, the, this theatrical display at, at the committee has been going on for weeks. So it, it, at the last second, when they finally realized that they were going to pay uh, a penalty for it, uh, the Liberals finally climbed down. But once again, this is Justin Trudeau's 
pattern of behavior. He only climbs down, he only relents when he's literally tried everything else. So why Thank you. Not the Prime Minister, sir? Why ask Katie Telford not the Prime Minister? Minister Don, good to see you. i got to ask you. Sure. There, there's been a whole bunch of stuff you've yep. been going through, so... Yep, no problem. I, I just... Chris Brown, CBC, good to see you. What do you make of all this foreign interference stuff that, that's been coming your way with you and your writing? And where are you at? Well, look, you know, first of all, I want to thank the support I've been getting from my caucus, my family and friends, and uh, constituent locally. A lot, there's a lot of support and love, and I want to thank them for that. Uh, because of the report of a verified anonymous allegation, I'm subject to, or my team, uh, to a lot of attacks online. And, um, and even extend to my constituents. You know, I think that needs to stop. Um, look, you know, I've been a politician uh, for almost 10 years now. And uh, in terms of my nomination, my elections, everything is properly filed and reported. It's all, all on public record, you know, and anyone has questions about um, expense or costs and where they came from, they can go online and find out. You know, I'm a Canadian. Um, nominated by liberals, registered liberals in Damali North and uh, elected by uh, Canadians to serve Canadians. I'm just going to focus on my work. Uh, there's a lot of work in the riding and um, you know I, 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 I want to see what uh, Mr. Uh, David Johnson uh, make out of it as a special repertoire. So yeah. I just got to ask you has the People's Republic of China played a role in your nomination, your election since you replaced Mr. Tang? Look, you know, I, I, the answer is no, absolutely not. Uh, I represent a very diverse writing. Um, you know, look at uh, my supporters. Uh, there are leaders from the Iranian community, from Armenian community, South Asian community, whole range of them. You know, I've never been offered, nor would I accept, help from a, 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 a foreign country or representative from a, a foreign country. Uh, so the answer is absolutely not. I also got to ask you, but since the reporting of our colleagues uh, with the opposition and so on, there's been a great groundswell coming up about foreign interference, particularly China. Some mentioned India, some mentioned Iran and so on. What do you make of all this? Because it seemed to sort of start with your case if, or your instance. Well, I don't I, want to. I, I would disagree with that. You know, I, I think um, uh, everybody has a different definition and understanding of what foreign interference is. Um, in 2020, you know, when I was the member of the Standing Committee of Ethics, I moved the motion to study uh, election interference, domestic and foreign. Right. So I, I know that it's been around for a long time. It's worthy uh, the, the study. That's why I moved the motion. So. You know, I, I, I think it's it's uh, it's unfortunate that you know my name is being mentioned in again I reported uh, a unverified anonymous allegation, right? Like I, I feel I can't. There's very little I can do to defend myself when I'm fighting, you know, against some 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 allegation that's that is not coming from a, uh, a, a definitive source. Right, so it's. Uh, I, I think it exists um, as a, as a parliamentarian. Um, our number one job is to protect our democratic system, you know, and the process. I'm glad here at Prague, uh, from either CSIS or ICMP and and Commission of uh, Elections Canada, that there were no. Um, uh, sorry, the interference did not result in uh, in the. You know, it was was not. Uh, it did not dictate or, or influence the outcome of the 19 and 21 election. And I just got to ask you about Richmond. Richmond's a long way from Don Valley North. Do you th do you see that uh, in People's Republic of China, foreign interference affected the outcomes in those two Richmond writings? Or well, when we talk about when we talk about foreign interference, uh, I hope the conversation doesn't stop just with the Chinese Canadian community, right? Like, I think uh, I've spent my entire career to encourage participation of, uh, of ethnic Canadians to get involved with our political system. And I don't want the study of foreign interference to deter them from uh, going to the polling stations next time, right? Like, watching from the treatment I've been getting, just because my name was, was brought up in the thing, 
I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are having second thoughts, you know, especially they're, you know, if they're from the ethnic communities, whether or not to get involved in politics. The democratic system that we have here, we cherish so much, um, needs the participation of all Canadians, doesn't matter where they came from. Prime Minister Harper closed the, the Iranian mission in this country, uh, citing many actions by the Iranian diplomats in this country. Do you think there needs to be some sort of diplomatic uh, squeeze on I, certain I, I wasn't around that time. I can't I, comment on it. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to, I don't want to focus necessarily on the PRC, sure. but I, I guess the other question is, when you're living with a diaspora community, with You've got Hong Kongers, you've got mainlanders, you've got Taiwanese folks, and you've got the actions of Beijing, and you've got an activist consulate in Toronto. Is there a, is there a tricky line you have to walk as an MP to, to engage as necessary with, with the diplomats that affect your community? Well, first of all, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not trying to lead yeah, you. No, 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 I, 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. First yeah. of all, I, 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 I was elected to represent all constituents. Like I said, I have a very diverse writing. Uh, yes, Chinese uh, Canadians are mixed up with the largest ethnic groups in my writing. But there is the Armenians, there's the Persian, and so on and so forth. You know, I, I think, so that's the first part. And the second part is I spoke with someone who's from Hong Kong, but is currently running a Taiwanese senior community center in my writing after this whole news broke. You know what he said to me? He said, Han, I feel that the Chinese community is being further polarized uh, because of these dis discussions. We came to Canada for, 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 for different reasons, but one is there's a common theme, is that we're here for, the, for, for rule of law, for democracy, for freedom. And, and, and once we become a, a citizen, we sworn uh, uh, also to be loyal to the crown and to protect and preserve this country as citizens, we want to be seen as Chinese, we want to be seen as Canadians as Chinese heritage, who celebrates Chinese heritage, we don't necessarily feel like we need to, you know, show sides when it comes to foreign geo geopolitics, you know, like, I think that's very well said. You know, my family came here for a similar reason, and, you know, if you ask my, my dad or my mom, they don't, they don't want to be pushed to make a choice whether I am for Hong Kong, for Taiwan, or for China, they're Canadians. And the stuff that they care about are economy, housing affordability, and, and how do we get out of COVID, how do we recover, you know, and, and how do we deal with the, the, the inflation, the interest rate. These are the, 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 on the top of their minds. Yeah. What is the message to your constituents going forward about you and where you've ended up in things? Like, what's your message when you're on the doorstep? What's your message to Canadians? Because we're here, but we have to. We're all moving forward all the time. You know, we're all. Well, I, first of all, I want to tell them that uh, you know, um, you know, my election, my nomination, and everything is followed has followed the rules. Uh, it's on public record, and it's it stands test. Um, second thing is, I want to encourage them and, and continue to to participate and let me hear what their concerns are, uh, and and participate in the next election. We have too low of a voter turnout. We need everyone to come out and, and, and uh, tell us what their priorities are through, through their ballot. But you know, it's, um, you, can't, you can't really do that uh, if they are scared or concerned or worried, or, you know, if they're going to be subject to discrimination, right? So yeah, that's my message to Do you support a public inquiry into this? Sorry? Do you support a public inquiry? into everything that's come out in the last few months? I, I think that government's or the Prime Minister's decision to have a special repertoire to look into this and make a decision whether a public inquiry is needed, I think it's a very good decision. So, you know, sure, I have my personal best interest. I, I want the truth to come out, you know, in my defense. But, uh, you know, I think, I think it's, uh, it's a good decision. We, have, we also have a study at the NCCOP uh, uh, committee, and I, you know, so I look forward to the decision. I'll, and I'll come do you up dispute now. that the? Just give me uh, a it's okay to sorry. With the code um, do you dispute that the Chinese consul helped in your nomination, or do you only dispute that you knew about it? I just answered this question, but I'll say it one one more time. I've never been offered, nor would I accept uh, any help from a foreign nation. I'm a Canadian. I That's different than my question. My question is, did you know? 
that the Chinese consulate in Toronto or the Chinese embassy here or any Chinese proxy was aiding in any way in your nomination? I can, again, I speak for myself. I was not aware of any help coming from another uh, representative of another country. Like I said, I was never offered, nor would I accept. And you weren't aware? I w so you're making an assumption that there was activities No, I, my of first such. question to you was both. My first question was, do you reject that there was any help from Chinese proxies, Chinese embassy, Chinese consul? And the second part was, were you aware? So, so, I, so are, you, are you actually able to say there was no help, or it's just that you weren't aware of my it? Cam my campaign uh, was built by, uh, or supported by leaders from all communities. So to say that, to say that, you know, so my, my point is, I was, uh, you know, I, I did not, was not offered, nor would I accept. I don't know if it's, it's clear to but you. My, it's not, because my question is, are you categorically saying that the Chinese government did not have a role in your nomination? You can check, you can check whether it's the, uh, my donation filing or reporting. No, 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 that's reporting. not my question. My right. question is, do you have complete and clear information that discounts or challenges or contradicts or shows that the information reported by Global News is wrong in the allegation that the Chinese government, consul, embassy, or any proxies aided in your nomination. So which, which news are you from? Do you, pardon? Which news you saw that you The Global Mail. Okay. So my, do you want me to say my question again? Yeah, I, I, you, you, put, you wrap a lot of things in there. No, 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 I can tell you, I can, I can tell. What I, I'm trying I can, to ask you is whether you know for a fact that they at all, that they did not aid. I know you're saying you didn't accept any help and you're saying you and weren't I was aware never of any offered. help. I was never I understand offered. that, but my question is, can you categorically say that they did not help you? Yes, I can just say that. You Even know, to, you, my, to my knowledge, okay. I was not offered, I was not told, I was not informed, nor would I accept any help from a foreign country, whether during my nomination or my election campaign. But CSIS or the Prime Minister's office or anybody else since all this reporting has not told you whether or not, unbeknownst to you, the Chinese embassy government or any proxies did in fact aid in your nomination. I can tell you that to this point, I've never received a phone call from CSIS. I never made in, in, uh, aware that if there is investigation, whether by CSIS, RCMP, or Elections Canada, pertain to my nomination or my election. What about campaign. the Prime Minister's office? No. The Prime Minister's office hasn't told you anything about what the facts are that they know that they've been told. What What do you mean the facts? Well, we know from documents, or, or from sorry, I should say from Global News reporting, right. that security agencies have been aware or alleged I'm, how that I, they did help in your nomination. And so I'm wondering if the Prime Minister's office has addressed okay. that. So let me, let me tell you, I cannot defend myself against a unverified anonymous source. That's not the answer to my question. That's though. exactly what office, Global News said, is they have not verified the, uh, the, 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 the allegation. Did the Prime Minister's office, though, address any of the information with you that Global no. reported? For example, and, no. and have you asked them? Because they would have. They would be able to no. correct the record. No, no. Like, like I said, I cannot, I'm not going to, um, I cannot define myself against a unverified anonymous source. But you could That's go to CSIS, you could go to the Prime Minister's office and ask them about our reporting and say, what information can you tell me about what has I happened? Did, have you I done did, that? I did write a letter to the director of CSIS. Ask them. Ask, no. They, 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 they acknowledged receipt. And and so the Prime what Minister's did your letter say? What did you ask of them? I asked. I asked them. Uh, I asked them about the latest allegation, and also to confirm if it was a leak from CSIS. And what about the Prime Minister's office? Have you asked Ms. Telford or Mr. Trudeau or nope. Jody Thomas what nope. they know? Because obviously nope. they're briefed on all of this. No. And why not? Because I, I know the truth. The but how do you know the truth if you haven't been briefed? I know the truth because I know my campaign. I know my I know the people that work on my campaign. I've worked I've worked with them for years, whether it's my own campaign or previous campaigns. 
So Look, I'm, I, I was. You're going on faith. Then. No, no, I go on fact. You know, I've been nominated since 2013, in the provincial capacity, elected. It's the same team. They're my friends. And the reason why, you know, I have leaders come uh, from the, the Tamil community, from the Persian community, from the Armenian community, from the Italian community, the list go on and on. So to come out, no, let me finish, let me finish, you? let me finish. To come out and support my campaign is because I've been working with them for years and they know me, right? And, and when you look at the, um, my core team, if anyone you know, comes to my uh, election campaign, they'll notice that, yes, I have Chinese Canadians helping out, but they're a very small portion of my campaign. So right. your but premises yes. of your question about whether I got aid by the Council General Office and that was a deciding factor for my... It, it's, no, that's it's, not what I said. I said any aid. I didn't say whether it was a deciding okay, factor. Sure. What I'm trying to understand is why it is that you haven't asked the Prime Minister any of his senior advisors who have the information to clarify for you whether or not you were helped. Because right now you seem to be saying that you're going on an article I of faith, that you know the no, people no, who no, were in your no, campaign. But I, I know what happened. I know about my campaign. You said you didn't know. Uh, you haven't been briefed. You're not letting me finish sure. my answer. I'll let you finish. Okay. Uh, I said, I know my team. I know who worked on my team. I know I have faith in them. I know the truth. And also the Prime Minister has been very clear in the public realm that uh, about the outcome of the 19 and 21 campaign. And I also heard on PROC from RCMP, from Elections Canada, from CSIS, that um, interference did not result, uh, did not influence the result of the 2019 21 campaign. To me, that's enough. That's a big difference, though, right? Whether it, also, actually, sorry, whether sorry. it impacted, is, is, shouldn't you be concerned whether anybody's also, interfering, whether or not it has a result? Good question. Also, also they said there was no um, investigation uh, uh, in the 2019 and 2021. The RCMP did. Exactly. And I have not received any phone calls from RCMP, Elections Canada, CSIS. And why with regard to you my the Prime Minister's office to clarify this, to clear the air? Because it's a verified anonymous allegation. I first, I got to find out whether it's a leak from CSIS or not. You're making a lot of assumptions. No, I, I'm, I'm not. They exactly have all the That's what the global news said is they have not verified the allegation. So it's but unverified. But the Prime Minister's office could. That they no, actually no, have but, the but information. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I? Why would I do that? It says unverified, anonymous. Because you want source. to clear the air with your name. Is that not correct? I think I put out a statement, and I think if you believe me, everything is in that statement. And so, why haven't you asked your campaign team if they received, if they knew about interference from Chinese embassy or proxies or consulate? How do you know that? You said you were trusting on faith that they, you trust them. I know my campaign team. Have you asked them if they were aware of any Chinese interference? Uh, well, the answer is no. There is, you haven't there asked were, them? No, the answer is no. There was no interference. But did you ask them? No, they, they, I, I answered a question. I was never offered, nor would I accept That's not any what I'm help. asking you. That's, what I'm, that's my There's answer. There's just some, some, but you're not answering some of the questions, which what? raises more questions. Okay. You're saying that you trust on faith mm -hmm. your campaign team. And my question is, why wouldn't you ask them? How do you know I didn't? Well, that's they're what I'm asking, asking you, and you're not answering. Yeah, but I don't know the relevancy of this. I told you, my campaign team. Uh, well, because as, as a candidate, many things happen in a campaign that you are not aware of right. because it's a short campaign. There's lots right. of people involved. So I guess I'm curious about what appears to be a lack of curiosity on your part mm -hmm. to ask the Prime Minister's office, to ask your key players to clear the air. I, I've, asked, I've asked people that involved my, with my campaign and who I, can, I still have contact with that if they were aware, they say absolutely not. And what do you make of the Ford government's decision or, or Vincent Kay's decision to stay outside of caucus while that's, I can call on that. I, 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 I'm not Vincent. Hands. I'm not Vincent. I'm not Premier Ford. They made their decision. I can come on. And why did you decide to stay in the Liberal Caucus while this is ongoing? I've done nothing wrong. I've done not, nothing wrong. You know, everything about my nomination and election is above board, and they, they're reported, and they are uh, on public records. I just want to be clear. The allegations that we had in our story was that there were Chinese consulate helped bring in Chinese seniors to vote for you, and that there were Chinese foreign students here that were coerced by the uh, consulate in Toronto to come and vote for you. Did you see any irregularities at the nomination meeting that would suggest that any of that happened? So, look, I read that part of the report. Um, 
my campaign offered transportation to seniors, not just Chinese seniors. And the bus involved in the transportation is properly expensed and reported, and that's on public record. It was it was directed to international students. I don't really don't know who's international, who's not international. We got a lot of young people coming to my campaign and, and, and support me. Throughout my career, I always encourage young people, especially from different diaspora, to come and get involved in the process. So that's that's all I can say about this. It's not my job to check if they're international students or not international students, right? How do you move forward from this? Just keep my head down and work for my constituents. I think I think the putting the hard work uh, in my writing is very important. That's what I'm elect to do. Um, again, I'm not going to spend too much energy on anonymous allegations, verified, unverified. You know, uh, that kind of if that I let that become a distraction of my work, then I'm not serving my constituents. Are you getting concerns raised by constituents? about the reporting? Or are they asking questions well, of you about what happened? So I am concerned, two things. One is because of the news story and all the hateful, uh, aggressive comments, death threats coming my way, it uh, does impact constituents in my right because some, 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 some comments were targeting them. That should stop. Second thing is the, the whole notion about interference will cast a shadow on the Chinese community, especially Chinese community, when they go to polling next, uh, next election. Okay, I, I don't want this to become a suppression on their willingness to participate in the next election. So I'll be, I'll be spending time working towards that. One of the things that the National Post reported is that you decided to skip out on two votes on declaring um, actions by the Chinese government against Uyghurs a genocide. Can you explain why you missed those votes but attended other votes around that? Uh, I'm aware of that story. The first, first vote that I voted with the government position. Um, but then again, you know, the. Members skip their votes, abstain the votes all the time. Do you believe and, it's a genocide? Yeah, hold on. And, the, and, and, and I wasn't the only one that skipped the, the, the vote. Um, and in terms of, you know, questions about, I, I voted a question about uh, whether or not, because I read the story, you know, I was, I was doing that in favor of China or whatnot. Look, you know, I voted to condemn China when they sanctioned one of our vice uh, chair of a standing committee. I voted to include Taiwan, you know, in the WHO. You know, in 2020, I moved the motion ethics committee to study election interference, domestic and international. And recently, I went to announcement to support extending the pathway to allow more Hong Kong residents to come to Canada, those that are seeking democracy and freedom. So I think my record stands on itself. Do you believe that the treatment of, gen of Uyghurs excuse me, in China is a genocide? I've, I've said uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, to the Chinese diplomats in my capacity as a CCLA co-chair co that uh, I have uh, deep concerns about human rights abuse uh, in, in China especially in the Xinjiang uh, region um, and um, I call for independent opportunity for independent um, uh, Canadian review of that condition so that's that's what I've said but you don't believe it's a genocide uh, that's what I said you know it, it's it's I, I have uh, no doubt there is a severe human rights uh, abuse in the Xinjiang region um, and uh, and that needs to be looked at independently. Thank you so much. Okay. Really appreciate I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Le gouvernement qui, le premier ministre qui laisse finalement sa chef de cabinet témoigner devant le comité de la procédure, qu'est-ce qui a changé selon vous? Mais c'est ça, c'est le premier ministre aurait dit qu'est-ce qui a changé. Tout ça pour ça. Pendant des semaines et des semaines, il n'était pas question pour lui de permettre à sa chef de cabinet, l'employé numéro un de son cabinet, celle qui est au courant de tout, de témoigner. Nous, ce qu'on sait, c'est qu'on portait la voix des Canadiens qui veulent savoir qu'est-ce qui s'est passé exactement, que la chef de cabinet avait des choses à dire et malheureusement, M. Trudeau, pendant des semaines, a empêché sa chef de cabinet de s'exprimer. Mais ben, écoutez, tout ça pour ça, ce qui est important, c'est qu'en bout de ligne, elle témoigne. On est très fiers d'avoir forcé le vote et d'avoir forcé le jeu avec notre motion. Et là, maintenant, les Canadiens auront droit à la vérité.
Mais pensez-vous que vous aurez les réponses à vos questions? Parce ah. que là, eux plaident le fait que ce n'est pas le comité pour avoir ces, ces discussions-là. Bah écoutez, euh, nous avons un travail de parlementaire à faire et on sait que les personnes qui témoignent en comité ont la main sur la Bible, c'est-à-dire qu'ils sont, sont obligés de dire la vérité, de ne pas mentir, mais d'aucune façon. Alors, on souhaite évidemment que la première euh, employée du cabinet de M. Trudeau honneur, euh, agisse avec honneur et dignité, avec la hauteur due à son rang et qu'elle donne toutes les informations sans rien cacher aux Canadiens. Une petite dernière sur le mandat du rapporteur, le qui qui a été annoncé ce matin, on donne jusqu'au 23 mai pour, pour euh, mm -hmm. dire si oui ou non, on, il recommandera une enquête publique. C'est juste trop long, ça. Non, oui, écoutez, euh, ça fasse même d'avoir ce ce, cette idée-là, ne tient pas la route dans un premier temps. Pas besoin d'un rapporteur pour savoir qu'il faut faire une enquête publique là-dessus, qu'il faut aller au fond des choses. C'est ce que nous nous demandons et on souhaite que ça se fasse. Alors que ce soit le 23 mai ou le 28 juin ou je ne sais pas quand, c'est pas ça qui est important. Ce qui est important, c'est qu'on fasse l'enquête publique. C'est ce que les Canadiens veulent et la vérité a ses droits et on souhaite que cette vérité-là éclate au grand jour pour savoir exactement qu'est-ce qui s'est passé et jusqu'à quel degré. La, le régime communiste de Pékin s'est infiltré dans le processus électoral canadien. Et soyez bien clair sur une chose, que ce soit un seul vote qui a été influencé par, par ça, c'est déjà trop. Alors, on verra bien de, de, de quoi il en retourne, mais ce qu'on sait, c'est que dès le départ, M. Trudeau n'a pas donné leur juste aux citoyens. Souvenons-nous, quand l'histoire a éclaté, il a dit non, absolument pas, il n'y a pas eu aucune interférence. Après ça, quand Globe and Mail et Global ont sorti l'histoire, c'est qui qui a fait la fuite? Il s'est attaqué au messager plutôt qu'au message. Et la réalité, c'est qu'après avoir menti trois fois, le premier ministre a dit, ben, écoute, OK, on va, on va voir, on va faire une enquête là-dessus. Et finalement, quoi? Et finalement, après avoir empêché pendant des semaines sa chef de cabinet de témoigner, ben, finalement, il s'est rendu compte que c'est peut-être une bonne chose. On est très heureux d'avoir forcé le jeu avec notre débat d'hier en Chambre, qui a obligé le, le NPD à, à finalement assumer sa responsabilité là-dedans, et surtout le premier ministre de dire, ben écoutons, oui, ma chef de cabinet va témoigner, il était temps. Merci, M. quelconque façon, là, pour les conservateurs ou pour n'importe quel député de justement forcer le jeu et avoir la tenue d'une enquête publique, ou dans le fond, c'est la décision du premier ministre, quoi qu'il advienne, peu importe à quel point vous êtes fâché. C'est-à-dire d'avoir de, de l'enquête publique. L'enquête publique, bien écoutez, nous, ce qu'on souhaite, c'est qu'il y ait l'enquête publique. Ce qui n'empêche pas le fait que la chef de cabinet devait témoigner devant les parlementaires. Et nous avons forcé le jeu avec, avec cette situation-là. Vous pouvez forcer l'enquête publique? Alors, évidemment, on ne fera pas de, de stratégie euh, publique, pour en ça comme ça, de stratégie ouverte. Voilà, c'est ça. On ne fera pas de stratégie ouverte. Et, euh, nous, ce qu'on veut, c'est qu'il y ait une enquête. Puis on le veut, on le veut au nom des Canadiens. C'est ça, l'histoire. Au même titre qu'au nom des Canadiens, on souhaitait que la chef de cabinet puisse s'exprimer, comme elle l'avait fait d'ailleurs dans d'autres cas. Mais malheureusement, le chemin tracé par le premier ministre, on l'a vu dans We Charity, on l'a vu dans SNC-Lavalin, puis on le voit actuellement dans l'interférence de Pékin dans le processus électoral. C'est d'abord, il nie, c'est pas vrai, absolument pas. Il essaye de cacher la vérité le plus longtemps possible. Puis en bout de ligne, ben, coudonc, ça va finir que madame va témoigner. C'est une bonne chose pour le Canada. De façon de se concerter pour forcer la main au gouvernement. Un, ben écoutez, à partir du moment où nous avons déposé le débat en Chambre, nous avons forcé le jeu, nous avons forcé la main au NPD qui devait absolument assumer pleinement leur responsabilité de parti d'opposition dans cette histoire-là. Ça a forcé la main, on en est très content. À Washington Park, ce matin, je suis heureux de voir qu'il y avait une unanimité de comité pour maintenant trouver un moyen de bringer Ms. Tuffer au comité. Mais pourquoi ça a pris tant de temps que ça pour dire finalement oui, ça fait trois semaines qu'on essaie de la faire témoigner, Mme Tuffer? Je ne suis pas membre du comité PROC, je ne peux pas te dire. Tout ce que je peux vous dire, c'est que je suis content qu'ils ont reçu, euh, arrivé à une entente aujourd'hui et j'ai hâte de voir son témoignage. Qu'est-ce que ça change? Sur ce drive, là, vous avez vu Art Canada hier, que le député s'est inscrit à la loi 96. Est-ce que vous croyez qu'on devrait toujours débattre en comité sur ces drives, sur l'application de la Charte de la langue française, sachant que Art Canada, le TN. Mais ils sont des grandes sociétés. La question, c'est les petites sociétés. La question, ce sont les sociétés entre 25 et 50 personnes. Et, et la décision du Québec d'appliquer la charte de la langue française à ces petites sociétés. Il y a plusieurs différents enjeux. Et, et, euh, Il y a toujours un débat, c'est sûr. Ben, je, 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 encore, je ne suis pas sur ce comité non plus, mais j'imagine qu'il va sûrement avoir un débat parce que je crois que c'est important que nous, au gouvernement fédéral, appliquons les lois fédérales et non pas les lois provinciales. Vous parlez de Mme Telford qui va finalement témoigner. Mme Telford, oh, oui, 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 oui. ça change quoi, là? Well, c'est clair, c'est nécessaire pour le gouvernement d'accepter les responsabilités de présenter Mme Telford au comité. Donc, l'NPD, notre position était claire avec le gouvernement. Donc, M. Telford va participer. 
au comité. Et là, vous allez voter en faveur ou contre la motion conservatrice après la première question? Je pense que cette mo euh, la motion des conservateurs, ce n'est pas important maintenant à cause de la, la, la rôle du NPD pour euh, forcer Mme Telford de participer au comité. Il y a d'autres questions. Oui, 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 oui. On a aussi appris que le rapport spécial aura jusqu'au 23 mai pour décider si oui ou non aller de l'avant avec une enquête publique. Est-ce que c'est trop tard, selon vous, le 23 mai? En fait, l'enquête publique, à mon avis, elle aurait déjà dû débuter. Kenny Telford? Je ne vois, je vois pas ce que, le, ce que le rapporteur va nous rapporter d'utile dans ce dossier-là. Là. Les, les choses sont évidentes. Tous les intéressés, tous ceux qui s'intéressent à la politique conviennent après une enquête publique. Tous les partis en conviennent, sauf les libéraux. Alors, euh, le rapporteur public, je ne sais pas quoi vous dire. Là. Le fait que Mme Telford, euh, finalement, il a témoigné, c'est une bonne nouvelle? Ben oui, ça aussi, ça aurait dû être aidé il y a longtemps. Je pense qu'il y a un processus de, de transparence qui devrait être établi de façon permanente et depuis les tout débuts. Mais en ce qu'on verra, je vais laisser ça aux responsables des dossiers. Et, mais oui, je suis content de savoir qu'elle va témoigner. Il reste à savoir euh, est-ce qu'elle témoignera complètement, est-ce qu'on aura la totalité des informations dont elle dispose, ou si elle ne va pas nous cacher, ce qui ne serait pas non plus étonnant, même si ce n'est pas, à mon avis, acceptable, mais nous cacher un bon nombre d'informations sous prétexte du, du euh, secret professionnel et ainsi de suite. Est-ce que ça change quoi que ce soit, là, la motion, le vote sur la motion conservatrice cet après-midi? Euh, encore une fois, là, on va voir. J'arrive, j'étais à l'extérieur du pays. Là, je suis revenu hier soir. Je vais laisser les responsables des dossiers commenter. Mais encore une fois, à mon avis, ce sont des questions qui sont urgentes, qui sont primordiales. Quand on parle de préservation de la démocratie, je ne pense pas que les délais sont nécessaires. Puis je ne vois pas encore une fois ce que le rapporteur officiel pourra nous rapporter d'utile dans ce dossier-là. On connaît déjà la situation. Ce qu'on a besoin, c'est une enquête publique. Merci. Merci.